Kelly, thanks for joining us. What's been the sense of movement in the, in the talks in these first four days here? What have we achieved so far? Oh, you're welcome. So, look, I think what it's, it's easy to come to these negotiations and think that actually not much is happening. I think what we've seen in the last few days is, is a shoring up of what we knew the issues were always going to be. We've seen some movement forward around the uh, decision around establishing the Green Climate Fund that will go to an informal. What we need to see is that agreement is that that passed and those agreements agreed to so that we can move on with getting money into the fund. So this is one issue we knew would come up when after the US and Saudi Arabia blocked that formation of the Global Green, Green Climate Fund going to the COP and it's come up and it's being progressed. So this, this, is, this is good, we're seeing movement forward here. We do need to see that go through, we do need to get this fund up and running and we do need to get the money in it. And that's looking reasonably likely at this point. The next issue is going to definitely be making sure we get money in that fund. The fund needs to be filled. It's no good to have a fund that doesn't have money that then can't be given uh, out to, to poor people in developing countries. And what's going to be up next? What should we look out for over the coming days? So the other issue, which is key coming into this COP, is a second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol. Africa has made it clear African countries want a second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol as a pathway forward to a legally binding agreement. We can't let Kyoto die on African soil. So we need that... At and the environment can't afford for Kyoto to die. So what we need um, is, is um, we need to see a second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol, and this is part of, a, of, of the framework moving forward. Now, right now, today, on uh, which is Thursday, we're going to see some discussions around what the different... Uh, what the different countries want in terms of a pathway forward to a legally binding agreement. So we want the Kyoto Protocol as part of that. We also need a pathway forward to a legally binding agreement a post, uh, in, in a post-2012. And we, the politicians are turning up next week. Should we expect fireworks or is it going to be a, a smooth week, do you think? We need the political will for this to happen. Uh, there's still a lot in play here. We need a very, um, we need a, a bold vision. We need a very ambitious uh, coalition of to reduce emissions. And there's a very real chance that can happen. We need the, the EU. We need the EU to keep doing what it's doing. We need the EU to be talking with AOSIS, the Association of Small Island States, uh, the least developing countries. We need them to also be talking with the uh, emerging industrialising economies like China and India. And there's a very real chance that we could see an ambitious coalition for ambition. We need this. We need the politicians to get on board with this. We need them to drive it. What we don't want to happen is for politicians to start taking these negotiations off in directions they don't need to go. We don't need to see a sucking out of political will from, uh, from things like getting money into the climate fund. This has been, there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. It's been very businesslike so far. We need that can to continue. And politicians, if they can do that, will really contribute here in Africa to actually getting outcomes for, for, some, of the, for some of the poorest and most marginalised people, in, including women small-scale producers. Now, we see people everywhere that are impacted by climate change, but clearly it's very apparent here in Africa as well. Everybody I've spoken to so far has said they're optimistic. Is that out of necessity or is that because of signals from these talks so far? Yeah, look, there's a lot still at play here, so I think that there is reason to to be optimistic. But that optimism that optimism must be tempered by actually seeing concrete action. We need action on climate change. We need action on ambition. We need ambitious redu emissions reduction targets. We need these if we're going to get to a. To, a keeping global warming below two degrees. So there's, de there's definitely a lot at play here. There's definitely reason to be optimistic, but the pressure needs to stay on to make sure we deliver, to make sure that there's action that's going to benefit poor people, 
people everywhere and the planet. Sounds like there's all to play for with the second week on its way. Thanks very much for speaking to us, Kelly. You're welcome. Thanks.